Hey, welcome back to your favorite trigonometry class. We're going to take a look at uh, polar coordinates and vectors, this uh, section specifically polar coordinates. Here's our objectives that we're going to go through. Um, <clears throat> just as an intro, you know, we've used rectangular coordinates to plot points in a Cartesian coordinate system up to this point, you know, with an X and a Y, an input and an output. Uh, now we're going to use polar coordinates that have uh, certain advantages, so it's a different way of, of uh, plotting a point. Um, they have certain advantages such as in biomechanics with pivotal joint movement, orbits, uh, etc. Okay, so to start out here, what, what, you, what we have here is a pole. Okay, in a polar coordinate system we have the pole right there. We select a point called the pole. We're going to put that thing at the origin. And then a ray with a vertex at the point. So you, you notice we've got this ray uh, with its vertex right there at the pole. And that's our uh, polar axis. Okay, so we've got the pole and the polar axis. And what we do is a point in this polar coordinate system is represented by an ordered pair of numbers. So you have an R which is the distance from the point from the pole as long as R is positive. We'll talk about it if R is negative later. And then we've got theta which is an angle. Okay. Um, formed by uh, the ray that's rotating around. So again we've got R comma theta or the polar coordinates of the point. Let's do an example here. So here's our R distance from the point to the pole and here's our theta rotation 4 pi thirds. So we're going to rotate um, 240 degrees 4 pi thirds and since R is positive we're going to go out so here's our 4 pi thirds and then the point is 2 uh, units away from the pole. So there's the point P. Now this keeps going, but this is where our point is. There's in polar coordinates, that's 2, comma 4 pi thirds. Again, in polar coordinates. Okay? So it's in quadrant 3. All right, let's do that next one 2, comma negative pi thirds. So we've got R, comma theta. Um, you know what, let me make that, I'll make that a 3 instead. How about 3 comma negative pi thirds? So I'm rotate uh, negative pi thirds, so negative 60 degrees. There's our rotation. And then I go out our amount from the pole. 1, 2, 3. Since that's positive 3, I just go out 3. So there's our point right here r comma theta, 3 comma negative pi thirds in this case. All right, 2 comma 0, we've got r theta. So there's no rotation. The theta is 0. So we're just going to go out 2 to right there. So there's our 2 in this case, 2 comma 0 in rectangular coordinates is the same as 2 comma 0 in polar coordinates. All right, now what if we have, you notice on the next example, we've got a negative r. r is negative 3, okay? If your r is negative, the ray extends in the direction opposite the terminal side of theta. So, in other words, we still rotate negative pi thirds, right? So here's our typical negative pi thirds. Um, and here's here's the terminal side right here that I just drew. But since r is negative, what I do is I actually go the opposite direction. Since r is negative 3, it says just go in the exact opposite direction. Oops. for R and then go out one two three and that's the point right there
there. Okay, so even though the negative pi thirds was that rotation right there, since r is negative 3, you just go in the opposite direction and put the point out a distance of the absolute value of r, so a distance of 3 units out, okay, from the point. So that r being negative 3 just means go in the opposite direction of your typical terminal side. Okay, so that's the point negative 3, negative pi thirds in polar coordinates, okay? You can see it right there. Again, instead of going here, you say, nope, I'm going out this way. One, two, three. Because the R is negative, okay? That's the instructions for your uh, polar coordinates. All right, so what about, uh, here's some situations here. Um, polar coordinates are, are not unique. You can find uh, uh, different polar coordinates for the same spot, right, the same point. So, for example, 3 comma pi 6, we know 1, 2, 3 out is right there. But another way to do that would be to go, instead of just pi 6 around, let's go all the way around 2 pi plus pi 6, which is 13 pi 6. So I could have 3... 13 pi 6 is my r comma theta. That's another way to describe it. Or I could go in the negative direction, negative 11 pi 6, and still have my r be 3. Right? Or, you know, another way is you could say, well, how about if I, you know, this angle is the same as that angle. So what if I went like this? 7 pi 6, right, because this is pi 6, that's pi 6, so it's pi plus pi 6, so 7 pi 6. And then I said, instead of right here, if I just make my r negative 3, right, then I end up right back here. So there's another one. Negative 3, 7 pi 6 still gives you the same polar coordinate there, as 3 comma pi 6 does, right? Here's a little uh, better picture of that. Here's our 7 pi 6 rotation, but we don't want to go this direction, so we'll make it negative 3 so that we end up where we want at the same spot as 3 comma pi 6. So, again, these, are, these polar coordinates are not unique. All right, so let's do some, let's do some examples here. I've got to get my lovely blue here. Uh, 2 comma pi thirds and find other polar coordinates of this same spot for which we have a positive r and then a uh, the theta is greater than or equal to 2 pi but less than 4 pi. All right, so first of all, we know pi thirds, 60 degrees, right here. I'm going out 2 right there. Okay, there's our spot, 2 comma pi Thirds, there's our R, there's our, whoops. Oh, come on. There's our R, there's our theta, okay? So if we want a theta that is more than two pi, let's go around once to the same spot. So for part A, our theta would be two pi plus pi thirds. So six pi thirds plus pi thirds gives us seven pi thirds. So two comma seven pi thirds lands us at the exact same spot. Let's do B. Now we want a theta that's less than two pi greater than zero, up greater than or equal to zero, but we want a negative r. We want a negative r. Okay, so what I need to do is um, let me draw it right here. So I need to rotate to the red line. I need to rotate here and then make the R negative so it flips it around to the same spot as 2 comma pi thirds. Well, we know uh, this theta amount and that theta amount is the same. So it's pi plus pi thirds, right? Uh, I'm going pi to here plus pi thirds more. So my theta would be pi plus pi thirds. So 4 pi thirds.
but then I gotta flip it around because I don't want it to be here. I gotta flip it around because I still want to end up at that same spot. Right? I'm gonna rotate around four pi thirds, but I'm gonna make my r negative so that it extends in the direction opposite the terminal side of theta. All right, let's do C. R positive. Now this time we want a negative uh, angle. We want a negative angle. So I just need to figure out what's that. Well, it's all but pi thirds. Right, the original rotation was just 60 degrees, so it's all but 60 degrees. So 300 degrees. In other words, um, pi thirds minus 2 pi. So pi thirds minus 6 pi thirds, that's negative 5 pi thirds. There's your, there's your rotation, and your r is 2. And it goes out 1, 2, after you've rotated negative 5 pi thirds. All right, so uh, next we got conversion from polar coordinates to rectangular coordinates. So if you've got a P uh, that's a point with R of theta, the rectangular coordinates are given by. Okay, now where does this come from? If you're going from polar to rectangular coordinates, okay? So if you think about this, you've got this uh, distance out R, right? Here's our distance R out and we've got to, to, to point P, and we've got this point P being R comma theta, right? so here's our theta. This is a distance X, Y, so right X up Y. We're trying to get the rectangular coordinates X and Y, so how would we do that? Well, we just say, well, sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. In other words, Y equals R sine theta. And then we know that the cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. In other words, x equals r cosine theta. So that's where those come from, and, and that'll work in any of your quadrants there. So let's find the rectangular coordinates at the point with the following polar coordinates. So here's our r theta. So in other words, it's rotated um, 45 degrees pi force, and we're out here at 2. All right, two, oops, two. So what we're needing is our x and we're needing our y. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say, well, I know the sine of pi force is opposite over hypotenuse. So y equals 2 sine of pi force so remember y equals r sine theta. You can just go directly to y equals r sine theta if you want to. But the sine of pi force here is root 2 over 2. So we got root 2. There's our y. And then number 2, we say, well, I know the cosine of pi force is adjacent over hypotenuse. In other words, x is r cosine theta. You know, I'm just multiplying by r on both sides. So x equals 2 cosine pi force. We know the cosine pi force is root 2 over 2. So we got root 2 comma root 2. That's my x, y. That's my rectangular coordinate for my r theta polar coordinates 2 comma pi force, right? That's that same location in the rectangular coordinate with rectangular coordinates, okay? How about this one? Negative 2, negative pi sixths. Negative 2, negative pi six. So here's our r, here's our theta. Let's draw this thing. Here's a negative pi six rotation, so negative 30 degrees. But I'm not going this way because my r is negative. It's actually up this way, 1, 2. Here's my spot. Here's my spot. Okay, what's the rectangular coordinates? All right, we're going from polar to rectangular. So, whoops, number one, 
we've got our x equals r cosine theta, x equals r, r is negative 2, r theta is negative pi 6. We've got cosine of negative pi 6. If you look on your unit circle, that cosine of negative pi 6 is root 3 over 2. So this ends up being negative root 3. And then y equals r sine of theta, negative 2 sine negative pi 6. And we know the sine of negative pi 6 is negative a half. So this ends up being 1. So negative root 3 and up 1, there's our x, y for that location right there. Right? Negative root 3 is like negative 1.7 or so, and up 1. Okay? All right, find polar coordinates of a point whose rectangular uh, coordinates are 0, 2. So here's our, here's our x. And here's our y. So if we've got an x and we've got a y, let's just think about this. For this one, let's just think about this. That's 0, 2, right? Here's our rectangular coordinate. Well, if I want the r theta, we know the r is 2. So the question is, what's the theta? Well, it's pi halves. There's our r theta for that situation. Now that's not the only one, right? Two comma pi halves. We could also uh, go around once to there. So we could also have two comma, what's two pi plus pi halves? Well, two pi is four pi halves. So four pi halves plus pi halves is five pi halves. That's the same spot. That would work, right? We could also go around in the negative direction. Like there's one, or negative three pi halves, right? Or we could even go negative pi halves, but then flip it with a negative two. So it again, extends in the opposite direction of the terminal side of theta. Okay, all those would work, right? Well, I'm gonna stick with the easiest one right there. All right, so this is just uh, some more description of a similar type of a problem. If you've got uh, your x, y is a, a comma zero, then your r would match that a comma zero, and so on. If you've got zero comma a, then it'd be a comma pi halves. So these are if they're right on the x axis or the y axis. Okay, so you want to just think about those. Now, what if they're not on the x-axis or the y-axis, and you're going from rectangular to polar coordinates, right? If you're not on the x-axis or the y-axis, you're going from rectangular to polar coordinates. Uh, what you want to do first is we're going to we're going to plot the point. So here's our x, y. Here's our x, y. Let's plot that point. Now, what? first of all, we're going to need this r right here. So we know we're going over x down y, right? So number one, we know uh, by the Pythagorean theorem, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. This is how we're going to find our r. So 3 squared plus negative 3 squared equals r squared. So r squared equals 18. So plus or minus the square root 18. Of course, r is a distance here out from the pole. We're going to have it be positive. So r equals 3 root 2. That's the first step. Okay. Now the second step is we, we want to figure out our theta right here. Okay. We want to figure out theta. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, I know that the tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. So the tangent of theta is negative 1. In other words, the sine over the cosine is negative 1. Well, we know that the sine over the cosine is negative 1. The only spot um, that that's going to happen is on a unit circle right here at negative pi 4. So the other one would be at like 3 pi 4, but it's 
we want this one right here. Uh, that's where your cosines root 2 over 2 and your sine is negative root 2 over 2. Where is that at? At pi fourths. I know the tangent of negative, negative pi fourths, I'm sorry, same spot as 7 pi fourths, is negative 1. Okay? And so we know theta must be negative pi fourths. Now another way to do that is if you have tangent theta is negative 1, we know we can run the arc tangent on this. And it'll spit it out on your calculator. Uh, I don't know if it'll spit out exactly negative pi fourths, but it'll give you the radians for that. Uh, theta would be negative pi fourths. Now remember, when I run the arc tangent of the tangent, uh, this theta is going to be between, it's always spitting it out between pi halves and negative pi halves. So note that. It's always going to give you an angle in, in there on the unit circle between negative pi halves and pi halves because of the restrictions on the arctangent that we talked about when, when we did those inverse functions. Okay, so we know, all right, this theta is negative pi force. We know our r is 3 root 2. So one of our answers would be, Three to be to this spot and polar coordinates would be r three root two and a negative pi force. There's our r. There's our theta. There's one, right? Now we could also, if we wanted to, you know, that's not the only one. We could go around. Now that we know that that's forty-five degrees in there, we go around positive direction, right? So we say 3 root 2, that would be 7 pi force. That's another one. Right? Or we could even go, we could even go to here, to 3 pi force. We could even go to 3 pi force and make it negative 3 root 2. That's another one. Right? So any of those will work. Again, I'm going to stick with the simplest one in this case. Um, let's do another one here. How about negative 2 comma negative 2. Negative 2, negative 2. Here's our x and y, right? Oops. Negative 2, negative 2. Number 1, let's find our r. Let's go ahead and find our r. x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So we got r squared equals a, so r equals 2 root 2. So there's our hypotenuse, 2 root 2. Secondly, we say, all right, tangent of theta. Looks like we got opposite over hypotenuse. So our tangent uh, theta equals 1. And so when we think about that, our tangent of theta being 1, if I run the arc tangent on this, or if I just do it with our, we could do it with the unit circle because there is a spot on the unit circle where the t tangent of theta equals one, both in the uh, first quadrant and also in the third quadrant. But it's, if we run the arc tangent, right, it's going to give us an angle between pi halves, less than pi halves, but greater than negative pi halves. And so it'll spit out, it'll spit out pi fours. Right. Spit out pi fours, but we don't want we don't want the pi fours, right? We 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 need it to go to right here, but we know that's pi four. So what is it? It's pi plus pi fours, right? It's pi to here, and then plus the pi fours right in here. So it's pi, and then plus the pi fours right there. Okay, so theta. Is pi plus pi force, so theta is five pi force. Five pi force to get there, and we already know our r. Our r is two root two. The theta is five pi force. There's our r. Here's our theta. Or uh, I guess we could use the pi force. We just got to make the r negative, so it flips it around to this way. So if we use the pi force, that means we've got to have negative 2 root 2 to land us on the in the opposite direction, right? to land us at that point. 
We could also rotate negative 3 pi fourths if we wanted to and keep that R as 2 root 2. Right? Any of those would work, but again, I'm going to stick with that one. That's the one I like right there, but any of those are, are good to go. All right. Um, <clears throat> Let me let me uh, stop right here, and I'm going to start another unit section here, another part to this video. Thanks for listening.